So I'm Karina Kushini. Doesn't matter how you speak my name because nobody knows. It's somebody wrote when my grandfather arrived in Brazil. I'm from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. And I'm presenting this lecture about teaching non artists to draw. So I'm um, because in 2014, I presented um, the results of my project, trying to bind anthropology and drawing together in uh, Urban Sketches Symposium in Parity. So everybody at the end of the lecture asked me about the process, uh, how I, I deal with the students, how were the prompts, the workshops I did. So. For this symposium, my proposal was uh, to, to show the, uh, some of the workshops as an activity, but it was going to be very difficult to, to show uh, 25 workshops in an hour and a half. <laughs> so they, they wisely uh, told me, please turn into a lecture. It would be much better for people to understand. So this is the lecture I prepare. Uh, so my challenge at first was to um, change uh, social sciences university classrooms. They are mostly like this in, as always in 1980, in 2016. As a student put it, <laughs> it's really boring. So, uh, we decided to, I decided to start this anthropology and drawing project. And one of the goals was to renovate classroom, make things more fun and, and uh, uh, kind of applied and practical. But at the same time, um, I face um, uh, uh, just a, a quick um, explanation about my use of the word drawing and we are in the Sketchers Symposium. I, I was thinking about that. Why am I saying drawing, drawing, drawing and we here we say always oh, sketching, sketching, sketching. And I, I think it's an, I, I'm not sure but I think in Portuguese the drawing is translated uh, in a sense that we understand sketch in English. Because for, if you present, ah, I'm going to a drawing class, it's something more, you know, light and, and fun. And if you do, oh, let's sketch, it's more architecture. So it's more technical. You feel more pressured. It's not uh, unanimous uh, interpretation of the words, but for my experience, drawing is, uh, so it was my mistake to use drawing, drawing, drawing the whole lecture, but you, you can translate it to sketch. <laughs> it's okay. Okay? So uh, my goal is this. Uh, standing students, uh, students on the floor, lots of uh, materials, the ones we are so uh, in love with <laughs> in the um, sketches community. Students working in groups around um, some projects, students laughing and uh, having fun with each other and doing things with maps, images. So this was the image in my mind, what I wanted to be. But I always, uh, uh, at the first, I, I had to do I had to do a little trick. So the first course I proposed was called visual anthropology because it's really common to have visual anthropology classes, but people, when they say visual anthropology, is always filming and using cameras to make pictures, to take pictures. So I call it visual anthropology so the students would join the class and come and when they were uh, seated like you are here <laughs> and now, uh, I said, oh, okay, let's 
explain what I mean when I mean visual anthropology. We are not using any equipment, no machinery, only uh, drawing stuff. And they were like this. <laughs> Teacher, no, I can't. <laughs> I can't draw. This is this is the draw I can, the only draw, I, the, most of them were with that, uh, of course, this is not the first class photograph, but she allowed me to use it uh, as the fear, that what I, because what is drawing? Uh, Leonardo da Vinci is somebody who can draw. So there was this um, kind of, uh, you know, is you're seeing the opposite, the model, and what I, what she thought about herself and the disability she incorporated. Um, so my goal was to, uh, I, I tried to summarize in three E's, like to erase this kind of thinking, enjoy, another way of thinking about drawing and explore. So uh, I'll try to show some workshops that try to uh, transform this kind of imagery of drawing in, into the students' heads. So first exercise, I will, I will talk in more detail about the first workshops the, the erase part or destroy the pre-visualized model of drawing they had, because maybe this uh, would be useful for everybody. And then I'll give a lots of examples, shorter ones, of some kind of ex exercises I do in the class. So we, the first one is using uh, old newspapers and scissors and a black pen. And we choose um, a picture of a person in any position, the full body, from foot to head, feet to head. <laughs> and they just have to cover the, the person in black. So uh, for this whole set of first uh, six or, s yeah, the first six workshops, all we have to do is based on pre-used um, support. Oh, um, I was start talking in Portuguese, <laughs> sorry. Uh, like newspapers, used books, photographs. They know, they don't face uh, blank sheets uh, before five to six, sixth week. It's, I forgot to say, it's a 60-hour class. So we have 15 weeks. It's a long term in Brazil. Usually we miss some of, the, of this. You can come, of course. And so they, they color the figure and they cut very carefully the, the whole uh, process I'm always saying to them, slow down, stop, listen, pay attention. The same things we are so uh, in love with because that's why we are sketchers. So uh, they, they really carefully cut this um, piece of black paper they just created because it was a picture before and saving the, 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 the paper around it. So they start playing with this small little black people. I, I always ask them, what, I, what are these forms? And they, oh, of course, teacher, this is per people, person doing this and that. Oh, so. This is also a way to recognize that we have a, like a mind library, a library in our mind of images that we learn in our lives. We're gonna see 
Uh, some exercises with uh, native drawings, for instance, that is other kinds of libraries that are not, not equal to ours, or if we compare to 18th uh, century libraries, visual libraries, they, they wouldn't be the same as well. So we are always making things and thinking about what we are trying to do with our um, so this is uh, some exercises of how we can classify, organize, sense of distance, like we are in uh, this, um, we are used to this perspective vision, we learn this with the artists from the 15th century, at least in the, in the west part of the, the world. Uh, the odd forms, like a student told me, oh, teacher, so um, uh, a person can be a dot. Yes, a person can be a dot from the, from <laughs> if, you, if you see from, from the top, for instance. So they, they learn lots of um, different things, and playing in the, the, when you are in movement, when you are standing, so that, sticky figure she imagined at first, we shake it a little bit. We, we start um, complicating things to simplify things. <laughs> so we also play with um, the opposite uh, creation they did, they just did, and uh, the, the, the out, out, uh, outline of the, of the picture, they just cut it because I, I tell them to save the whole uh, context and we talk a little bit about this, the effect of what's around, what make us see what we see depending on this context and how we put meaning on things because of this kind of, of uh, setting. So, a lot of topics to discuss later, if you want, <laughs> of course. And they have always a homework to explore. So, there's a, the class, three-hour class, we play a lot and they, they go home and they have to explore this and they sometimes come with this. Uh, they trace. The, the outlines or the, out, the, the inner lines, they do lots of stuff and they, they kind of feel, oh, I can, I can draw now because I have this uh, puppet I can play with. And so they, be, they become a little bit freer, uh, fearless, or, and they start doing lots of interesting stuff by themselves. Second and third workshop are the concept is drawings everywhere. You don't have to make it yourself. You can find drawing. And this is an exercise inspired in Carla Son Sonyan books, Creative Lab. You're gonna recognize maybe one of if you if you have this book. It's a wonderful book. But I adopted uh, for our goals little different from hers. These are pictures from the city, pavements. And so they, they, uh, we use tracing paper. We, we clip tracing paper on top of those pictures. And they have to find hum human figures, for example. But they cannot create any line. They have to find the drawing in the cracks. So what comes out of it is that they, they are doing, this is an example of the, my last cl uh, class. They, for example, they, these, the base picture is the same and they create three different kinds of humans or figures. So they, they start seeing many concepts uh, they had are, are falling apart. <laughs> I don't know if I can use this word so uh, strong, but they, they can see the, this drawing 
doesn't need to be perfect. There are many kinds of representation, graphic representation of people. Uh, uh, the same, I, everyone has his uh, or her eyes, so the outcome will be as different. So it's a very strong experience for them to really see this happen in, in two classes and, and effortless because they, they, they always said, oh, but this is so easy. <laughs> and I'm glad that they, they think that way. This is an exercise by a student. They optionally, they color what they find. It's another one. It's the, the whole uh, picture, the many faces. It was, sometimes I, I get a little bored doing the same thing. So I think not just faces or bodies or animals or anything. And so this class did uh, faces. So she was looking for faces. So the Drawing Everywhere concept works in uh, workshop th uh, three also, which is finding drawing uh, with textures. So uh, Play-Doh, you call, you call here Play-Doh? Yeah. Or it's an uh, American way. And, and crayons. So lots of uh, texture, textures in the, in the environment. They start glowing the, <laughs> the building. Look at this, uh, how beautiful. <laughs> In, uh, with with uh, this, this dough or with um, newspaper sheets, very thin ones, the ones we use in the first drawing classes, and with crayons, so they produce things like this. So uh, they, I, I send them out, uh, on the, around the building, the university building, searching for draw, drawings. And they, they go mad about this because they uh, start finding letters, flowers, uh, patterns everywhere. So it's another um, very fun class to do. And they learn a lot that another kind of drawing that is the re repeated, more um, playful, creative, not representational or is that correct, representation? Yeah, okay. And uh, this fourth uh, workshop is um, the concept, I'm sure you're all familiar with uh, negative uh, space, but we uh, had this trick of printing what we do. So, and using a board, not to use paper. Remember, first five or six lessons, no white paper at all. It's a rule for me because I, I don't want them to face the white, <laughs> the white uh, piece of paper. So uh, the negative space, I, I'm sure you will all know this example. And so we, we take clipboards, trans transparent clipboards, and um, the frame we, you, you also are familiar with. And we start doing, um, I'm going to show a series so you can understand and you know the, the exercise. Uh, it's inspired in Betty Edwards uh, drawing with the right side of the brain, but adapted also, you, can, you, you will see the, uh, what we're doing. Sometimes the class get really excited and start uh, making modeling for each other and drawing the building also. And this is a uh, two way, she's drawing her, she, her drawing. And the close up of the result, uh, this, and then we put a sheet, a sheet of a white paper, uh, get a cotton with alcohol and, and when you, press the alcohol through, through uh, on top of the paper, the image will print. So it's very old fashioned mode of doing, but you, you're gonna see the results in a minute. They are happy to, 
this class made stairs. Uh, uh, this examples of results. So um, it's, it's the kind of experience that a person who never had any class of drawing gets really uh, good uh, results and you know so this workshop five is not in in the right order. I never do this in the fifth class, but I'm showing because it's close to the the, the fourth one. Is is using very very low cost course. You know I don't have big funding, so I I bought a strip of lead light. You can buy it everywhere. And it's not expensive at all. And we did a huge lighting table with the clipboards. It's a, it's a very uh, easy thing. You have to have a, a darker room to, to make it work. So they can, ex uh, can experience the same idea of drawing up, uh, on top of another, another image and making something that they feel pleased uh, with. Not because tracing is better or cleaner or anything like that, but just because it's a tool. It's another tool to experiment, and, and it's e very easy to, to use and, and to have fun. So that image we saw with the mono printing, with alcohol printing, we can see with the lightning table. It's not lightning clipboard with lead. <laughs> it's very... Um, um, so this is the real fifth workshop. Is uh, The lightning was uh, um, extra. It's the idea uh, from inspired in Monica, Mona Brooks book, Drawing with Children. And all of this I tested with my children before I did with the, the young undergraduates. It's the, the idea that we can draw using very simple elements, basic shapes. This is a, a page from the, her book. It's a 1996 book. And we can um, start uh, mimicking, copying some basic shapes, and we learn that they are, if you, we combine these basic shapes, we can do anything. So we do also the Betty Edwards uh, upside down image, but I, I created a um, um, more friendly way to make they do not know what they are going to do because they freaked out if I showed the, the image at first. I don't know if you're familiar with this uh, image. Of, I, 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 you may, but look, what the results are really <laughs> astonishing. They really um, get really excited about doing this. Some, some of them really don't guess what they're doing while they're doing. And so this is a turning point for them uh, as they, in their own, own words. And I'm trying to, I forgot to start them. Okay, but half an hour already. I have to run. And it, so this is another bonus. It's not in this, the order, but it's doing the same idea of basic shapes with other cultures, drawings. This is examples from native um, Latin American uh, natives drawings using, oh, of course we are, I'm teaching anthropology, anthropology students, so it's interesting for them to, to be in, uh, familiar with this kind of, of body, usu usually body um, decorations. This is not a picture from the class, it's a picture from the book. Uh, but we had um, the author of this book, she gave us uh, a workshop on body painting. So this is our class and we use theater makeup so we can make this basic drawings on the bodies. 
So we put um, the, the support of the drawing. Also, we destabilize. Do you know not? Uh, we, you know, we put in question the what support uh, a drawing doesn't have to be uh, made in a book or in a page. And of course, this has lots of meanings. These lines are, doesn't doesn't mean the same as we think they they mean. For example, just a quick example that. That, that arm there, very red, and the, the, the other um, skins are light, are light red. And we were painting red, she said red. But suddenly she realized, no, please, please, no, no, light red. If the tribe saw you in this strong red like that, you are the enemy. So the... The, 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 not only the color is meaningful, but the, the, um, the intensity of the color is also, and the, the, the wideness of the lines and the space between them, and how you do, like we teach the children how to make an A, they have also a way to make the drawings if you don't make them the right, so it's a lot. It's another lecture. I cannot uh, extend myself in this. So the the whole uh, first part it ends making their own sketchbook. We experimented with lots of formats, but they all have to be done in three hours. So very simple ones. These are examples of the the class. Another class using fabric and using old clothes, old, old fabric, nothing new, old, old pieces of paper they already have, and I only give them the needles and the thread. And they are making, and this is them happy with their own sketchbooks. So this sketchbook will be the first blank page and the second part begins. And they, oh, sorry, I forgot that they, they have to identify their sketchbooks. This is a famous Steinberg image. I, I'm sure most of you know. I'm sorry, the credit is not in the picture. And I show them lots of identities. identities. You're familiar to <laughs> uh, this first one. It's a Brazilian, um, uh, very famous cartoonist. And so they start uh, I, marking, uh, making the, the, the sketchbook a phone object. These are um, images of sketchbooks they, they did. So uh, when all this happened, I, we have to go move forward and to explore. So how do we do this? I'll try to show you as quick as I can. <laughs> and so observing and understanding the world through drawing, you're super familiar with this. Urban Sketchers Manifesto is about all this. And so we start with close-ups, which I think is easier to start with micro and, and then expand, expand the view. So, uh, we do this things, uh, you were also familiar, I, I won't show this exercises like blind contour, left hand, right hand, quick, fast, slow, the, the usual stuff. Uh, drawing objects in, on, in front of you and drawing little, little puppets or little animals and making different positions and changing things you know the stuff, and doing weird uh, points of view. And I created this exercise about bags. It's something a little bit more creative because the other ones are just the usual. It's like this. If it were a class, I would ask you to take a pen and go outside. And then I will put all your bags here, and you come back, and 
you, you are not supposed to draw a bag, that, a, a friend. You, you must choose one that you don't know the owner and uh, draw as carefully as you can and slowly as you can and pay very much, uh, very good attention to it. And then on the side, you make a story about it using the first person, I am, and give the bag a name and give her, he, her or him a history and a, a story. So you, they, they, they do things like this, a, a little bag or a big bag and a little story or big story and uh, examples of bags. And what happens then is that um, when they finish, we choose one bag, for example, um, hers. And who, who drew this uh, bag? Oh, three students did that. So they, the three of them tell the story they created and show the drawing. And then the owner comes and tells the story of the bag. So we have at least four, three, five, two stories of the same object through drawing because nobody knew anything about the bag before. And what happens is amazing. I, I can tell students cry because they, they rem the, the bags, uh, usually they, it's from relatives or loved ones or a historical bag or it's a, it's a very important object in the life of the person. And sometimes the story is the same, uh, the owner and the, the, the observer. So this, when this matches, or even if it doesn't, it makes the owner think about himself or herself. And oh, I'm, this is the bag I'm carrying. And this is kind of the message or visual message I'm carrying with me. And I'm learning about myself, about using this kind of uh, idea. So it's a very uh, interesting outcome. And they go home and they find objects to make the same exercise, but the objects they already know. So travel books, uh, instruments, they, um, they inherit uh, um, um, typing machine. <laughs> Uh, this is, was an immig immigrant family, and the, the only left object from Denmark that he has in Brazil. Uh, this is, um, I'm, I promise, I, I'm finishing. Let me see the hour. Okay, 10 more minutes. Uh, this is um, uh, cat stories. We, we did a, um, a conversation and we were talking about space, trying to um, uh, amplify our, our um, I don't know how to say this, but OK. And we, um, uh, the neighborhood of our university campus is full of popular shops. And all the students mention how they like the cats that it's supposed to live on the streets, but we decided to make a little collective research on them because it was the common element of all narratives about the neighborhood, the cats. So uh, we identify <laughs> uh, 17 or 18 cats. It's based on a student drawing. And each student or or um, I usually I, I let them work in, in doubles, doubles, do you say this? Yes. Pairs, sorry, <laughs> in pairs. And they go there and they must um, make a report with drawings and text, the cat's name or the cat's names, history, caretaker, all of the whole story. So they come. They came up with things like that. Uh, first, drawing and texting. I, I'm going to show some uh, closer, um, like this. 
This is, um, and the cats are very interesting subjects. So, uh, I'm allergic, I don't like cats, I love cats, I, this is my favorite cat ever, this is cat is annoying, has fleas, all the stories you can imagine. And this has, um, it was stolen and recovered, detective stories, <laughs> and many, many, many things. So we widening up, um, we start talking about people, faces, and feelings. Um, this is the hardest part when it comes to draw people, faces, everybody gets scared again. Oh, it was so nice and fun. Let's stop there. <laughs> no, let's move. So I, I found a way to approach this. I, I, I like a lot this photographer, American photographer, Lewis Hine. I don't know if you know him. It's a wonderful work about workers in the United States. And he talks a lot about people, image people, um, people images. So we do some exercise trying to, I project, they start tracing, but then I, I turn off the projector, so they have to remember. So uh, we keep doing those memory and, and simplifying. It's not covering in black anymore. It's now you have to find, how, how, how do I choose to make this eye? Should I do the round stuff, or should I just make a dot, a little line? What do I do? So I keep uh, giving them some hint and then erasing the hint and let them figure, figure out by themselves. So this doesn't show very good, but it's the idea. So sometimes they draw and then the projection comes back and they say, oh, I didn't remember there was a foot here. So then when they go in the streets, they start looking, oh, the feet is there. Ah, there's a space between this and that. The, the thing we do as a sketcher, of course, you know. So I show also artists from the sketcher, sketcher's world that um, have um, a loose style of drawing people, which is, I, I think is uh, most friendly to, to introduce to them, like those four you, you are familiar with, I'm sure. And so, uh, great artists, then they, they can, I can draw also not perfect realism and things like that. And also simplify uh, even more with Matisse's faces, which is uh, really a surprise for them that they, he did this, um, this great artist. So we, we do an exercise memorizing this, this face, but uh, using two colors. And this is uh, an example of the result. A lot of individuality of the authors, but also there's a woman with a scarf and a sad expression. I think it's pretty interesting. Some uh, research using, researchers using the skill in, in the, on the streets and just examples of what they do in, uh, by themselves uh, outside the classroom. On the library, different uses of a library, for example. So the, the final problem is uh, the big spaces around us. So I uh, also work with their memory because I, I think uh, the problem I face the most in, in the young students or um, post-adolescent, post-teens, I don't know, <laughs> uh, or young adults is the difficulty to slow down and to memorize and to pay attention. So there is another uh, uh, trick I play with them, which is, um, this is just an image supposed to not to be that. 
they they draw some imagination. I won't I won't talk about this one because it's I I'm running out of time. Okay, but it's uh, imagination about what they think about the place they live. Something very loose. But this is an, uh, uh, the exercise I was talking about. Uh, Imagine we are in our university. You, do, you just arrive as usual every morning from 8 a.m. to whatever. And you do this for weeks, for months, for years. So I tell them, please, organize five streets on the paper by yourselves. And I gave the names only. And the streets they are very familiar with. And the university, the, the building, and okay. So these are two maps of the same place. Uh, the building is here is square with uh, some kind of roof uh, because there is a garden inside without the roof. I don't know how I, could, I would call this. And the other one is the with the green is uh, 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 trees inside. So they start. Uh, comparing the maps and how can you do this and I do that and so the other the other exercise I start giving them colors and I I tell them oh please put some trees on this space and uh, for example I'm gonna see the the picture it's better uh, this is a, a student doing the, the um, he had some experience before but you can see there are no trees in front of the building. And this is the building, uh, the picture. So after I, I give many colors and show, tell them to draw many things, I, 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 I show them a presentation of pictures of the things I, I said. And they, oh my god, the, the statue was this way. The, there were four huge trees in front of the building. Half of the class failed the tree um, prompt just to remember the, those four trees there. And so they, they are going into this building every single day and they don't see um, the, the trash bin there, the, the orange thing, the newspaper kiosk, uh, things like that. You know, the, the idea. So um, they start build, um, making maps of the, their fieldwork places. Um, they start paying attention to those things out, outside class, say examples, examples of creative kind of maps student did. And a quick tour, a very, very quick one slide per workshop just to, to, to end the lecture. Uh, we also did visits to slums or favelas, as we call in Rio, and looking for graffiti, uh, local artists, and local um, guides to guide us to other kinds of images. Uh, visits to uh, artists' studios. This artist is famous for, to, uh, in, in his artwork, t talking about the, the, the city, the environment, and the, um, it was very interesting uh, place to, to go. Um, uh, writing on text, previously uh, written books, pages, visiting museums, of course, and artists, and drawing about this, drawings and pictures mixed here, and watercolor, uh, small workshops to make them familiar with the media, and Drawing outside the building. This is the the the, the how to say this the back side of the building, and a lot of tagging, and they had to draw each tag because we have um, a side research on tagging, and so they they and the final goal, of course, uh, the whole this whole project is trust and enjoy observational drawing. I'm gonna show just a quick. Um, set of ones, the passage of time, and uh, research on a bar, uh, research on a, um, a street, a research about um, um, professional that work with 
with wood, but only round wood. It's a special speciality on, on wood. I don't know the word in English, I'm sorry. Uh, so, remember my drawing? <laughs> what happened to this girl, our first um, story? Uh, she did this, the first, um, and a lot of more drawings. She did that. It's a research about gardeners. She decided to research gardens and gardeners. So she did a wonderful report, a 15 pages report, and a lot of drawings also. So that's it. Thanks. This is another student. And this is that final. You already saw that. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Questions? I'm so looking forward to see if you think this makes sense. Thank you very much. It's really interesting. Are there any sort of other positive outcomes in terms of evaluating grades, understanding of the subject? And do students take this sort of idea and maybe use it to learn different subjects? Yes, we do. Um, depending on the class, I do weekly assess assessments. They evaluate the workshop they ha anonym anonymously. And also, this is because this is part of a project I have uh, as a researcher, I'm writing papers and, draw and making drawings about the outcomes or the consequences. So I gave a lecture about this two days ago in a, a Morgan Center, um, Center for Everyday Life uh, Research with Lynn Chapman's, uh, uh, the place Lynn Chapman's is doing her residency as an artist and the exhibition is awesome. You must all go tomorrow uh, night. It's really awesome. It's a one year work of sketching um, Morgan Center um, everywhere and, and going along with researchers and making drawings about, about this. So for me, the many, many consequences of, of this and the students, I, I think so. They all, um, they all uh, uh, not all, but most of them um, think this expanded their, uh, their um, how to say, um, uh, when you, you're building your, yourself as a researcher, so you get more tools to think about the world and to, to think about the concepts you're going to study. I think so. I hope so. <laughs> Any more questions? Do the students continue to draw? Yeah, many of them, yes. Uh, some send me drawings and post on Facebook, and some of them come back to do the, the class again. I, I had a student who came back twice, three times. So at least twice, I had lots. I, I have to change the, um, the course code so they can have it again because they think they, they can enjoy uh, other things doing uh, another time. So some of them continue, some of them don't. It depends. But I think it opens uh, a path, at least, for them. Any questions? I mean, I just feel really inspired. Um, Thank you. <laughs> I, I'm just curious to know if um, there's perhaps other departments, if you like, um, that see the, uh, the possibility of this way of learning. Yes, um, there are two kinds of interest, uh, interest I, I found. Um, I, I started being invited to lecture about the course in the arts department, the architectural department, in the other anthropology departments, and I start receiving students from them 
and doing the course. So I didn't show the drawings because sometimes when you are a designer and you go there and you already have so much experience, so the, the, outcome, the results are really different. But this happened inside the university, which is a huge university in, in Rio de Janeiro. But uh, there are some places on, uh, around the world who are with similar uh, projects and trying to build drawing into research and vice versa. For instance, Richard Alomar uh, experience. And, and in Canada, there is a group uh, interested in anthropology and comics and other visual kind of graphic language. In here in UK, Tim Ingold in I forgot the city, sorry, but he has a, a book, uh, not about drawing, but making as a form of research. And, um, but in anthropology, there is this Michael Tosic, it's an anthropology, anthropologist from Columbia, in New York. And he did a book uh, with very good titles, said, I swear I saw this. And it's about his field work in Colombia. Latin America, and it's about drawings in sketchbooks. So I don't know if, if this answers your question, but it's... No, it does. I mean, I ask because I'm kind of experimenting with some of the things ah, okay. in Australia. And here at Morgan Center, they are exactly doing, but they invited an artist to, to be the, the sketcher, but uh, they are thinking a lot about the contribution of these two languages, the text and the research and the sketcher language, you can say that. And also in Portugal, there's, um, uh, um, of course, many things, but this uh, Canada group, uh, sorry, it's University of Toronto, uh, but I forgot the, the last name. Uh, but they were trying to put an event on this and they count 14 people uh, talking about this kind of ideas, uh, social sciences and drawings, especially anthropologists. Okay. Any more questions? Hi. Has anyone approached you about um, science into engineering uh, at all? Um, I'm curious because uh, I work at Google and one of the things that I've actually done is I've taught a uh, class for employees about, um, there is a focus in the U.S. on STEM education, science, technology, engineering, you know, medical, but uh, we like to say STEAM, is to put art in the middle, to put the A in there. Um, so trying to um, kind of instill the idea that um, sketching and visual kind of observation really um, is, is very useful also for, for those disciplines and innovation particularly. So I'm curious if you've ever uh, not with Rio, Rio engineers, but I'm doing a research about his history of sketching, uh, scientific sketching specialty, because um, in the new world, so-called new world, the expeditioners, they ha all had uh, um, sketchers going along and collaborating, so this was uh, common sense in 19th century that you put together many kinds of scientists and some uh, people doing sketches and paintings and technical stuff and um, so since at least since or Leonardo da Vinci's uh, very par paradigm of, of this kind of scientific use of drawing he first uh, cut the, 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 our brain in slices and um, his famous author of sentence that how can a text tell more than this and whatever he's showing. So it's been a history of collaboration and, and it was mandatory to know how to draw. There is a very interesting book, it's drawn, drawn to art, no, drawn to art, it's another one is, um, I can send you the reference, is about how drawing was mandatory in school. Yeah. 
until we uh, filming, photography, cameras, equipment became so um, common that uh, so. But I, I I wasn't yet approached by any engineer, <laughs> a real one, <laughs> about this. It's, it's interesting you say that because I met a psychologist uh, some months ago and he was talking about how every child, we are born with the ability to draw. We all are. We can all draw. And when we are kids, we all draw. And our parents ooh and coo about it and say, isn't that beautiful? Look what my son did, yes. look what my daughter did. This is when they're young. Then they reach the age of about seven or eight, and then the parents start looking at it and say, that's not quite an apple. No, the apple should be like this. And mm -hmm. the child begins to think that maybe he or she is not getting it right. And parents themselves are often responsible for curbing that creative instinct that is in every child. And by the time they're 11 or 12, and they've got other interests, girls, and so on and so forth, or whatever the case may be, and they've lost interest. Mm -hmm. And they stop drawing. Whereas we all could draw at one point in time. The psychologist wouldn't blame the parents, I guess. So, because uh, there are so many theories that uh, when they turn not seven, but when they turn nine, 10, 11, they become really self conscious and really critical about everything. So, as your parent, you feel that your kid loves your, you as no matter what, and then, then that age, you go, oh, mom, you're so old, your hair is so white. What? What? They become critical everywhere. They become aware that the world is not perfect, the parents not perfect, and the drawing is not perfect. So that, I don't, I don't want to blame anybody, but because I'm an anthropologist, so I'm not sure of anything. <laughs> so I, I, but I think uh, many researchers say it's something that comes with the age, with the, uh, the maturity, Maturing, maturing, that they they become aware of this. Uh, they 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 break the bubble they were living in as kids, and also in psychology, there's huge amount of research about drawing, kids drawing the meanings and how the. Uh, I love some uh, beautiful articles about how the houses. Uh, become different in age. So I, I checked the curriculum in Brazil. So at the age of eight and nine, every kid should know how to draw a simple map. So they are, Google, Google is uh, it's an interesting, they are ob obliged or they are trained to see the world and understand that kind of language, visual language. They start with the box. Every, I think everywhere is the same with the box and they make the classroom using um, maybe little boxes and they, so they start seeing from the top and then they going flat, flat, flat to the, so they, they are learning this and they are all, so this, also helps them, they be more critical on themselves, like my drawing's not good, and that, and that, so. Is it not a case of like Tiger Mom? When they get to a certain age, parents want them to be a doctor, lawyer, whatever. Oh. And they start trivialize all the art subjects. And the school, the school starts saying, don't, you don't need to die anymore. Yes, when you reach fifth, sixth grade, it drawing is forbidden. If you draw in the test, you, you get some um, minor something points. <laughs> you were saying? Selective, as opposed to like math, science, writing, all of those things are the required, right? But music, art, you know, that's yeah. all elective and optional. Yeah. But they're not optional, right? <laughs> they're not. They're not supposed to be. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Didn't Picasso say something about yeah. it? When I was a, a child as an artist. Yeah. Yeah. Child on, and yeah. it took him 50 years yes. to get back yeah. to being yes. a child, child artist. Yes, yeah. yes, it's beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. Appreciate it. Uh, so great, great. Thank you for coming. You're quite wonderful. Um,
So a couple of things. Do you ever think of, in, as you get in the course a few times, do you think of changing the content? A lot. Sometimes, uh, the, this is a mock course I, I showed you because uh, it's fake because it's not every course has every workshops except for the very first ones because I get bored or I don't get the artist to show us the, the studio or the museums not showing the exhibition I can come with, uh, with them. So sometimes I, I think this exercise is not working so I, I change. So uh, it's been changing since uh, uh, the beginning, and now I'm going to stop uh, because I'm tired. <laughs> you can imagine, I go to a room with that old kind of chair with no table, and I have to carry lots of, of bags with uh, pencils and papers and things, the, and of course they 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 sometimes they have their own stuff, but I have to uh, prepare a lot of stuff to make this happen. So I have, of course, uh, we, we have this, uh, not TAs, but uh, undergraduate assistants that work with us, so they help a lot also. They have the credit. And they have to make a little research themselves, so they usually choose a topic and, and elaborate a little bit. So sometimes they, they propose a workshop and we work together for them to, to lead the exercise. So I think we have a library of 30, 35 workshops. I showed you 15, so I tried to pick some. some I, I had to laugh, uh, leave uh, because it was too, too much to show together. We worked with photographs, uh, cutting, collage, and fabrics, and things like that. Thank you so much. Uh, but I'm, uh, if you want to talk more, <laughs> thank you.